Let's talk white noise. I have five different options for you, ranging from zero pounds to almost a hundred pounds. Let's start somewhere in the middle with Ollie the Owl. We also have Bernie the Bear and many other variations of this. This one is currently on Amazon for $24.99. All his little limbs do something. So we have, this one does your white noise, rain, heartbeat. We have the foot that does the volume. The other foot does the, um, can you see it, the light? You can see it much more in the dark. And then this one does your lullabies and then we can turn it off on the foot. So pros and cons for this one. Massive pro is the cry sensor. So the way this one works is that you turn it on and it runs for 20 minutes. If you have the cry sensor on, it can listen to your baby, which sounds really creepy, but it listens out for screams and cries and it turns itself back on. And you can either do that for a three hour timer or you can do that just nonstop. Obviously the battery will last a certain amount of time, whether you have it on all night or not. Um, the quick way to do it is to hold down for five seconds on the kind of the white noise bit or the lullaby if you're using the lullaby. And then now this guy's on because I'm talking, it's just turned itself on. <laughs> Can you hear that? So if I hold it down again, So it just comes on there and turns itself on. So now this will last for 20 minutes. I'm gonna turn it off so you can hear me. So that would go on for 20 minutes and then it would be quiet. And then if I've got it on the ongoing sensor, every time it would just hear something, it would turn on for 20 minutes or if it's the three hours, it would turn itself off after three hours. It is also sensitive to things like doors. So if you close the door or sometimes if the dog barks, like things like that, it will turn itself on, which is fine. It just randomly comes on. And that's kind of just a fun surprise for everyone. I do love the cry sensor as a pro. The downside is that if you want to change any settings or charge it, you have to like do surgery on the back and pull it out. Gosh, I can't do that backwards. There we go. And pull it out so it charges there. And then all of these settings are on this little panel there. It like doesn't take long, but it's just a bit annoying to have to like keep getting it out and in. The charge will last, I think it says 25 hours if you do it on the highest setting and 75 hours if you don't. The only downside is you don't know when, this is such a mission getting this back in. Ugh. The only downside is that you don't know when it's gonna run out of charge, so it can just go, and we've had that quite a few times and been in a kerfuffle when it does just, oh, thank goodness, when it does just stop, it's a bit of a nightmare. So if it does run out, it takes about five hours to charge, so if you're needing it, it's a bit of a nightmare. The other kind of this one is that it just starts immediately. So if I were to turn it on, it just comes on really, really loud. And I know this doesn't sound very loud now, but if it was the middle of the night, it just comes on out of nowhere. And then when it turns itself off after 20 minutes, there's no fade in, fade out. It just goes off after 20 minutes. And at first that was fine, but then we started to find that as little one got older, I know she's only six months now, but as she got older, it would actually wake her up more than anything else because the white noise would be on. She'd find it really calming and then it would turn off and it would just be silence. And that's when she'd wake up and it was really frustrating because this doesn't have just a constantly on setting. And I know that would run out the batteries a lot, blah, blah, blah. But it's frustrating that there's not even an option. I would like that as an option, but it's not an option. So this cry sensor is so good, especially in the early days. I feel like at six months, I feel like she's a little bit too old to benefit from that now. I'm not sure whether she's loving white noise or needs a lullaby now or something, but for three months, this was just nonstop, like everywhere with us. And it's got like a little Velcro bit. So it attaches to like the side of the cot bed um, as well. So first three months used every day. We then moved on to the Snooze Cloud. This one is currently $23.99 on Amazon. The reason we got this one is because it's so much smaller than <laughs> the Ollie the Owl. And we needed to pack one of them in a suitcase. So obviously you can see that this one would win in a suitcase. So this is why we got this. This one works really, really simple. It just has two buttons. So we have the button here in the edge. This is for the sound. When we do the lights, oh, you can see that now. When we do the lights, we have the red lights there just on the side by my hands. And then there's a white light in the middle there. We tend to use the red light. It actually works so much brighter than you can see because obviously it's daytime again. Um, it's also got this little Velcro strap on the back to attach to the crib. And the way it works is on the back here, it's battery powered. So again, you don't know when it's gonna turn off, but at least when it does, you can just replace the batteries if you had them. It does have a little screw at the top. So you do actually need to take a screwdriver with you if you go places where you think you need it and it might run out. So we did take a screwdriver on holiday. It's then got the on off switch at the back, but this is just like general on and off switch. So it turns itself off after 20 minutes of use. So this one is super simple compared to this one. They're about the same price. Um, Ollie the Owl obviously does a little bit more, a little bit fancier, but for the fade in and fade out, 
this one has been so useful. It doesn't have a cry sensor, so it's on or it's off for 20 minutes, but for the fade in and fade out, this one is really, really useful. The next one we have is YouTube. Obviously, you know what YouTube is. So we just search white noise and there's usually kind of 10 hour tracks on there and it's got like a black screen with white noise. We tend to play on our phones. So pros, obviously it's free. You can just play it, leave it, off you go. Cons, if you have YouTube ads playing, then obviously it's gonna stop every so often and play an ad, which is, let's say, super frustrating. We currently don't have ads on, so it will play the 10 hour track for us, but it means that you have to have a phone or something plugged in the whole time. So we've actually had to set up our charger in the nursery in the corner. So she obviously goes to bed before we do. So it just means that we don't have our phones for however long it takes her to get to sleep, however long the phone is in the room with her for which is a good thing, I guess, not to have your phone, but I work on my phone quite a lot. So not having my phone from, say, seven, eight o'clock onwards is difficult sometimes because I like to get my work done in the evening. So we actually had to change to something else in the end, but having YouTube on my phone was such a savior. Speaking of phones, there, if you have an iPhone, there is also a little function that you might not know is on the phone. So do this with me, people. I've already set mine up, so mine will look slightly different. But if you go to settings, and then scroll down to accessibility and then scroll down to audio visual and then you see background sounds that is where you can go on and off and I've got dark noise on and that is what kind of my phone already has in terms of white noise dark noise I've got mine set to how I want to and then when I now go to my home screen and slide up then in the bottom for me bottom right corner there's like an ear and then I press my ear and then it's got an on off and background sounds on and then I can just turn it on and it's really inoffensive and I can just turn it off with a click of the button and then that's done and then that's just always set up for me which is really really handy pros of that obviously completely free once you set it up it's super easy to use it's really 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 quick to just click it and go cons you obviously can't have your phone again um i also have to turn my notifications off they turn off automatically at half past 10 anyway but before that point i have to turn them off because if someone calls you or something then it just turns it off and suddenly you have a baby that is crying and it is frustrating but for something that is free it is amazing and I would highly recommend it. So the other thing that I have that I would not necessarily suggest buying for your baby is an Apple HomePod. If you have one in a different room and you are happy to relocate it for a little bit, the HomePod is really, really useful. So we've just moved ours a couple of days ago because we realized we could. Obviously, if you have an Alexa, that kind of thing works as well. So our HomePod in the nursery usually lives on the windowsill, but I've just moved it down here. So if I pop into my home, and then I can see all my favorite accessories. So if I see the nursery HomePod, I can click on it here and then just turn it on that way. I can also say, hey Siri, play white noise. Now playing white noise. Hey Siri, pause. So if I go into the home and then click on the nursery home pod, I can see exactly what it's playing. I can press in the corner to loop it. And then that just means I can leave it playing all night. I don't have to leave my phone in here. I can just leave the home pod in here. It's not offensive. You know, I don't get to use it in other rooms of the house, but I don't really mind if it's gonna give me a good night's sleep. Um, I do actually tend to turn it down or turn it off quite often. I'm trying to not use it through the night for her. But you gotta do what you gotta do. The last one I wasn't gonna mention just simply because I don't use it, but I've just sort of realized it's in the room. Um, we have white noise and a light, a red light on our baby camera. So we have the VTech something something number. I'll write it on the screen. We used to use the red light on it, but it was a very, very bright light to the point that I felt like it was waking her up in the middle of the night. If she started to stir, I think it really woke her up. And then the white noise on it or the lullabies on it, they're really, really short. They're like a minute long. And every time it plays, it kind of gets to the end, stops, and then starts again. And I just felt like that was just waking her up far too often. And it just wasn't, it wasn't really a nice sound. And obviously I bought the camera not for the lullaby part of it. I bought it to be a good camera. Um, so I don't actually use that one, but you might find that you already have a built-in white noise system that you're happy to use anyway. I have many different options for you. Obviously the free ones, like the one on your phone, YouTube, etc. Free ones are always nice because you don't have to pay for them. If you do want something a bit more fancy with a light, then you have a couple of kind of the toy options here. And then if you want something else that is just voice command, you can walk out the room and it's done, then obviously something more expensive like a HomePod, but again, I wouldn't suggest buying a HomePod for a baby unless you're feeling fancy, and I'm not sure I'm that fancy, but I'm sure there's like a thousand more different white noise options out there, so if you have a favorite one, whether it's something like this, something on your phone, or something sneaky that I haven't ever seen before, please let me know because I feel like I've trained my own brain to not be able to sleep without white noise, so that's, uh, that's a fun side effect.